This conversation with Doe seemed to be a perfect time to crank up some records by another artist who dissolved the barriers between R&B, pop, rock, and even jazz. Stevie Wonder's transcendent sonic gumbo and his relentlessly hopeful lyrics have served as an example for me of the potential music has to lift us, challenge us, unite us, and even rebuke us. His five-album cycle, which includes Music of My Mind and Talking Book from 72, Inner Visions from 73, Fulfillingness's first finale in 74, and his magnum opus, the double album Songs in the Key of Life in 1976, impacted rock, soul, R&B, and even gospel music. So, I decided to invite my friend Aaron A. Train Smith over to talk about Stevie in the 70s. I wanted to hear about that era from someone who was not only there, but was a part of it. When I got to Detroit, Stevie was right at that time making that change. He didn't want to be guided because he had his his own musical ideas and stuff like that. And as it worked out, it was great for him. Since he could just do his own thing, you know, he played drums, keyboards, sang. One of the first times you have an artist do everything. Stevie was like, for me, um, a door opener. It was a time of ideas. Different musics were everywhere. It was very Afrocentric, just like his his dress and persona. And he was pointing out issues in and outside the black community and uh, writing about those issues from a black perspective. It was more radical at the time than spiritual to us, you know, because you had had the Detroit riots, the L.A. riots, and, and all this sort of stuff. So Stevie's music was revolutionary. He kind of gave you a way of seeing things a little bit different. Stevie was more a Martin Luther King than a Malcolm X. 